Well, hello. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to today's webinar, Reimagining the Future of Transport, sponsored by DHL. I'm Lori Dearman, webinar producer at WebAttract, and in just a moment, I'll be introducing our panel of thought leaders as today's webinar is about hearing from these supply chain experts as they share insight into the future of transport. Rapidly evolving trends such as Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and autonomous vehicles are set to revolutionize transport as we know it. And experts predict that logistics providers will lead the charge. Today, we discuss what the future will bring to your supply chain. You'll also have the opportunity to have your questions answered at the end of the presentation with all of our experts during the Ask the Experts panel session. Now, before we get started, just a few words about who is in the audience today. We've invited you along with many other professionals representing 65 countries across a variety of industries and job functions. Regardless of your industry or your location, we're confident you'll find today's webinar of value. During the registration process, we asked each of you what you think the future of transport will look like. Here's what many of you are expecting to see. Increased transport optimization, improved access to data, IoT integration, more self-driving vehicles on the road, digitalization in general, just to name a few. Our speakers found it quite interesting to hear your responses, and we'd like to thank you for sharing your thoughts. At this time, I would like to introduce the first of our three speakers for today. Jim Monkmeyer, President of Transportation DHL Supply Chain. And Jim has been with DHL for almost two years and has responsibility for all modes of transportation for customers based in North America, ranging from LLP services to freight brokerage. He has over 30 years of experience in supply chain management, working with startups, as well as some of the world's largest shippers and third parties. Uh, Jim will get us started today with a discussion on a new era for supply chain and share with us several transportation trends for us to keep an eye on. So over to you, Jim. Hello, everyone. In the last two DHL supply chain webinars, we explored the transformative effect that digitalization is having on the supply chain industry. We discussed the increasing demands of customers who use the power of the internet to their advantage by extensively researching potential purchases before deciding which products to have delivered and where they want them, often within 24 hours or less. We also talked about how these new super-powered consumers, as Google calls them, are bringing their buying behaviors and preferences from their homes to the workplace resulting in B2B buying behaviors and demands that look increasingly like those in the B2C e-commerce space. We then explored another area where we as supply chain professionals are experiencing the profound impact of digitalization, the tidal wave of emerging technologies that are already beginning to revolutionize the industry. According to a Deloitte report published last year, the resulting new capabilities are quote, transforming supply chains into connected, intelligent, scalable, customizable, and nimble digital supply networks. Today, we'll take a deeper dive into the technolo technological innovations that are propelling us towards this new era, with a specific focus on the trends they're fueling within transport. Since you all made time today to join the webinar, despite how busy I'm sure everyone is, you probably already have some insight into the challenges that are driving the need for transformation and transport. On a high level, many of the day-to-day -day issues can be clustered into a few recurring themes. Uh, these include things like um, all but obsolete communication tools, a lack of timely visibility, arcane pricing practices and processes that really weren't built to handle today's rapid pace of business. Adding to the challenge is the cost of underutilized vehicles on unoptimized routes at the same time as we're now finding ourselves struggling to meet capacity demands on other routes. The market is ripe for disruption and the status quo just isn't sustainable indefinitely. And so the major transport trends that DHL supply chain is researching really reflect the industry's increasing urgency to address these pain points. 
The focus of DHL's research is on the trends most widely anticipated to have the greatest impact on supply chain transport. In an initial step, we narrowed the scope to the eight technological business and social trends on this slide. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all of them in detail now, but later this summer, we'll be publishing findings on each of them so you can take a more in-depth look at that time. This is a good place to pause for a minute uh, while Lori puts up our first poll question. Absolutely, thanks, uh, Jim. And folks coming up on the screen is that first poll question. And we're interested to hear from each of you, uh, how much impact is digitalization having on your transportation decisions today? Uh, is it no impact, maybe some impact, or significant impact? So uh, these results came in as 8% no impact, uh, majority here with 51% saying some impact and 41% saying significant impact. Uh, Jim, any thoughts on these poll responses? Uh, sure. Um, the uh, I guess I guess the some impact that leads the way here is okay. Perhaps that means we're ahead of the curve, which is good. Uh, but I think uh, I, I definitely expect these different uh, trends to have an impact on nearly all of us as we go forward in a pretty significant way. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. And um, you don't go too far. I know we're going to have you back at the uh, tail end uh, as well. Uh, next up, we have Sally Miller, uh, Chief Information Officer, North America for DHL Supply Chain. Sally was appointed to this role in 2014, taking responsibility for all aspects of information technology in support of the business strategy. Sally began her career at DHL in 2005 as IT leader for the retail business unit. Uh, Sally, welcome to the webinar, and uh, I'll go ahead and pass it um, over to you. Thank you, Lori, and uh, hello to all. As Jim just mentioned, uh, there are several uh, cases why uh, the transportation industry is ripe for disruption, and there are uh, a lot of technologies uh, that are coming out that we're going to discuss today that I believe will address some of the challenges that the industry has traditionally had as being very fragmented, comprised of many players of varying sizes that have done um, probably not the proper amount of investment in technology throughout the years. So here we are in an era of digitalization uh, or Industry 4.0, however you want to term it. Uh, and there are a lot of technology advances that are coming out at a rapid pace uh, that will force the industry to modernize and will benefit all in the supply chain. Uh, there is a you know, fair amount of disruption already um, being caused by entrepreneurs uh, and even long established freight haulers that are, are looking for opportunities in the market to utilize uh, and get a competitive advantage. So I'd like to cover a few starting with improved visibility. You know, like most industries, the impact of the consumer experience uh, bleeds into the corporate environment and real-time visibility of trailers having an Uber-like, you know, breadcrumb experience and, and transparency to pricing and other information is very attractive to those in the workforce. Uh, next, there is several what we would call digital freight platforms available in the market. These platforms connect shippers and carriers and eliminate some of the uh, manual processes uh, in brokerage that have been going on for, for years and provide price transparency and utilize uh, machine learning to provide automatic pricing using input from the market pricing, lane history, weather, and all sorts of factors to improve uh, the pricing and speed at which a shipper and carrier 
can better utilize their assets and provide better service. There are also a lot of manual back office functions in transportation. There are very low cost software robotic solutions that help automate manual tasks and can improve customer service. API uh, is an acronym that stands for Application Program Interface. It basically allows two applications to talk to each other in a preset defined uh, data format. Uh, a good example is on your phone when you hit the weather app, that's uh, a good example of an API. So more carriers are publishing APIs, so status updates, that various companies can pick up these updates in their applications and make better decisions. Mobile apps have been on the market for some time, but there have been a lot of development recently for carriers to use mobile apps to <clears throat> be able to see available loads and provide real-time tracking capability. Uh, next, IoT, uh, which will be discussed uh, fairly extensively here uh, by Ludo. Um, there are a lot of applications to take sensor data and trucks and do analysis and ensure better product quality throughout uh, the transportation leg of the supply chain. And in the future, when um, automated vehicles are commonplace, uh, these are being piloted now and are the way of the future. I do think it's a good ways out before they're moving freight commercially, but a lot of investment in the technology and exciting times to come on that. Also, uh, green technology, uh, vehicles and fuel uh, are improving fuel economy and reducing emissions. So all of these uh, are just kind of, uh, I think, ones that will be impactful on transportation and will benefit Everyone in the supply chain with improved transparency, it will cater to the um, how millennials like to work and improve asset utilization of the carriers. The carriers will get paid faster with digital freight platforms and improved technologies and integration. And it will help shippers to optimize their transportation spend with improved analytics and with the real-time visibility, security is also improved. So I'd like to take a couple minutes and talk about um, the hype cycle. There is a lot of buzz in the industry with a lot of these technologies. And I think most of you are familiar with this graph. The technologies I discussed are plotted on this diagram where they are in terms of their maturity uh, level from hype, lots of chatter to mainstream adoption. So uh, on the left there, early days for AGVs, drones, blockchains. Uh, I think blockchain gets the most hype of any of the technologies. There are some use cases around regulated products like pharmaceuticals that are benefiting from um, blockchain applications. But I, I think until this technology matures and is adopted more frequently, uh, it, it's a ways out before there's uh, a benefit to the average shipper. And then on, on the right side where the maturity level is is more and there's more wide stream adoption are for mobile technology, supply chain visibility, um, and, and different digital infrastructure that's being taken advantage of today. 
So I, I'd like to talk for a minute uh, on our supply chain visibility platform at DHL called Connected View. Uh, as we all know, end-to-end -end supply chain flows can be complex. You know, everything from raw material sourcing from suppliers through manufacturing, distribution, and final mile delivery. There are a lot of opportunities for, you know, issues to arise. So uh, our platform enables track and trace functionality for each of those steps in the supply chain flow. Uh, we utilize published APIs from different stakeholders in the supply chain in really a collaborative manner, whether DHL is managing that leg of the move um, or providing the service, we can take data from other carriers and provide the end to end, end visibility for our customers. What we're seeing is the quality of the data is improving over time. Uh, there are aggregators in the market who've integrated to different transport providers that can quickly uh, provide a, a lot of data and speed up a, a company being able to get better visibility in their supply chain. We have an elastic search functionality that, you know, depending on your job function and what data you have, you can input, uh, you know, a portion of a PO number a customer order number or a bill of lading as an example and pull up um, information about that shipment and drill down uh, to item level detail. So end-to-end -end visibility with knowledge comes power. Um, you'll have better decision making, uh, more efficient use of resources, and the stakeholders in the supply chain will get more timely updates in one place instead of having to look at multiple systems or make phone calls. Uh, we, we've seen improved customer experience and enables our customers and our customers' customers the ability to plan and be more efficient uh, in their workday. You know, with the increased um, visibility comes better opportunity to manage risk uh, and prevent disruptions in the supply chain. You know, avoiding lost sales, reducing expedited shipments, improved incident monitoring, uh, DHL has a service called Resilience 360 that helps companies manage disruptions in their supply chains, and I, I encourage you to go to our website for more information. Also, as mentioned previously, you know, more secure transport and optimizing transport spend by mining data and having visibility is another significant benefit. So with that, Lori, I will turn it back to you. Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, Sally, and um, we'll have you back at the tail end for the Q&A. So uh, folks, if you have questions for Sally, please uh, go ahead and put them into the queue and uh, we'll get to those at the end. All right, at this point, uh, I think is a good time for uh, another one of our interactive poll questions and coming up on your screen is that second poll. We'd love to hear from each of you. The question is, I have the shipment level data. I need to optimize my transportation services. Not really a question, more of a statement. Uh, response options, strongly agree, somewhat agree, somewhat disagree, strongly disagree, or I don't use third-party logistics providers. All right, we've got 19% uh, saying strongly agree. Um, our majority here, 42% saying somewhat agree, 22% saying somewhat disagree, 8% uh, with a strongly disagree, and 9% uh, don't use third-party logistics providers. So uh, uh, pretty spread across that spectrum there, and thank you for giving us your input. Uh, at this point in the uh, program, I would like to invite Jim back to the microphone to help us 
transition into the final segment uh, of the webinar for today and uh, interview and have a, a lively discussion with our next featured speaker, Ludo Fassati. So uh, back to you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, we're, you know, we're all starting to recognize that collecting and using the vast array of data that companies now have available to them can create benefits that can drive competitive advantage. In fact, data is the cornerstone of any predictive analytics processes, and that has perhaps never been more the case than in transportation today. The more things we can connect together, the more data rich we'll be and the more predictive the supply chain can become, ultimately leading to uh, increased efficiencies and a better experience for our customers. With that background, I'm excited to welcome Ludo Fassati, head of IT, IoT at Vodafone Americas. Um, he's here to talk about the Internet of Things, specifically as it relates to transportation and logistics. As an introduction, as you can see from the map on this slide, Vodafone is a market leader with its own network in 26 countries and partner networks across an additional 49 countries. And this enables true global connectivity of devices for their customers. Ludo, thanks for joining us today. To start off, would you please explain to our audience how IoT is enabled through what's called LPWA? Thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you, uh, all DHL, for 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 inviting me. Um, it's it's a real pleasure to be here today. So yes, we Vodafone. We are one of we are the most global telecom operator, as probably most of you know. Um, and uh, we are fortunate to have DHL as a as a customer or a partner. Um, and uh, we are the worldwide leader in IoT connectivity and some other. Uh, um, Let's say chunks of the value chain um, in the IoT space. So to to answer your question around LPWA, so LPWA stands for Low Power Wide Area. It is the first network that um, telecom operators, including Vodafone, designed for things and not for people. So it is the first network that is pushing or let's say making sure it ticks the box boxes for um, to, to better connect things. So to start with, um, I would say it has three key features uh, that I think are, are unlocking a lot of, uh, of uh, um, opportunities in the IoT space. One um, is the battery consumption. So a ordinary AAA battery would be able to uh, power a sensor or a device that would be able to send a message a day up to 10 years. So if you think of a meter uh, or, or, or something that just need to send a number out every day to say how much was consumed something or um, some other very basic uh, messages, it could last for 10 years with that without being uh, plugged into a power source or having to change the battery. The second thing is the penetration. So this new network would reach uh, two floors below um, the, the ground floor, so two, two floors in the basement. So if you need to connect I don't know, parking lots or vending machines or stuff like that within a, a parking lot, um, have a better penetration, uh, even a little bit under, like uh, up to, I think, three, or three to four feet under the water. So for fish farms and stuff like that. Um, and the last thing that it's worth mentioning is around the cost. So the cost of the module and the connectivity, it's significantly lower than what is currently available in the market with 2, 3, and 4G um, connection. Uh, so that this is a, a very interesting um, technology that uh, is launched by many telecom operators. As I said, Vodafone launched it in many countries. We have uh, four labs out there. Um, uh, and uh, we are deployed very uh, quickly all across our footprint. Now, I know that DHL is piloting some of this technology with Vodafone for shipments of car components between Spain and the UK. The key benefits of using uh, the, your sensors 
our things like providing greater visibility, increased security, temperature control. We also get a window into increased data for decision making based on predictive analytics. Ludo, how does this all happen from an IoT perspective? So yeah, so DHL is one of uh, the um, companies that is uh, pioneering this new technology. Um, so we are, we have, as you mentioned, a, a pilot going on in Europe, where we connect every single parcel uh, in, into a um, in, to, to, to do three things. One is to track the parcel with GPS technologies. Second one is to monitor the temperature, and the third one is humidity of. Um, um, for a customer of DHL, we are providing, collecting all those data and then um, providing them the data so that they can monitor um, how things are, uh, what, what happens during the transportation and, uh, and they can in real time monitor if everything is in line with what they were expecting. So this is a very interesting uh, project that would have not been possible probably with, um, with the uh, old technologies that we have out there. Uh, so it's uh, we are very excited uh, to see this uh, the results of this and let's see how, how it moves forward uh, and then to expand it uh, in other regions. Yeah, this is all fascinating. I really uh, personally look forward to hearing the results of this project. So tell me, um, as IoT matures and its use becomes more widespread. What do you see the other benefits being uh, that we can expect to see in logistics and specifically transport? So um, it is, um, so let me start by saying that, that the IoT has been in the logistic and transportation business uh, vertical since uh, many years now, starting with tracking some of the fleet management solution um, and, and so on and so forth. So it is something that already exists and has been very much so more sophisticated. Uh, the key, uh, I would say the key benefit and the original benefit, the, the, the reason why this started um, it was for efficiency. So also Sally mentioned that before, you know, real-time monitoring and real-time delivery and, and, and um, try to maximize the usage of uh, the fleet and uh, the consumption of fuel or the, the right um, um, route to point A, from point A to point B and so on. So this was the original reason why it started so well. In, into the um, into the logistic and transportation business, then then they expanded. The more uh, all of the other verticals also started to apply IoT solutions, it, it, more benefits um, started to pop up within the transportation log and logistic business. If you if you just imagine the autonomous driving benefit that could, could be could be radically changed the way um, um, the this industry is impacted, but also. I think IoT is impacting um, mo many of your customers' uh, way of uh, managing their warehouse or distribution with uh, expectation from customer uh, that are uh, very short time lead or let's say delivery time and, and stuff like that. So it, it changed a lot and so we are helping uh, many companies to get through this journey and and, um, and and DHL also is, is adapting to the new needs of the customers using more and more this technology that, that, that is based on, on, on IoT and, and connecting things and collecting all those data to make the right decision at the right time. So I think it is, it is still changing so it, and there's much happening and uh, let's, uh, let's see what, what's going to come next. Thanks, Ludo. One of the things that I thought that I found to be interesting is the use of the term by Vodafone of three and a half brains. Can you tell us a little bit about that concept? Yeah, so, um, well, Jim, let me let me tell you how it starts. So, uh, at a conference, uh, I would say a couple of years ago, um, I was asked about what what is needed and what it was the role of the human being in the autonomous um, vehicle um, 
to develop the autonomous vehicle to make sure that the autom autonomous vehicle would be safe and secure and stuff like that. So, so we came up with this theory that that now it's kind of being repeated more and more. There is this uh, three and a half brain theory. So we believe um, that um, to have a successful autonomous driving um, project or yeah, so service, let's say, you would have you would need first of all a very smart brain in the car. So the car needs to become smarter and smarter, and and that also is not something new. If you think of a parking sensor or you know the, all those or, or a cruise control, it's things that exist now since many years, but it's becoming more and more sophisticated with long long range radars and now cameras and stuff like that. So the car needs to develop a very strong brain um, with all the sensors and analyzing all that. That's the first brain. The second brain is that we are testing in Germany, but also we are a big fan of putting some of the intelligence within within the network. So we have uh, more and more uh, data analytics and and information within the network to reduce latency. So the network basically responds to the car in a very immediately without going back to the internet. As I say, just collect the data from the car, analyze them immediately, and, and just give it a quick response. And this is in case of a crash or stuff like that. And this is also a, a second brain, so the brain in the network. The third brain that is very important is, is, is of course, the brain in the cloud, where all those data then be sent up in the cloud, being analyzed through several platforms and, and big um, analytic companies, and then enriched with other sources of data, if you think about the weather, if you think about the traffic or stuff like that. And then all of that can be then pushed back into the car to take the right decision. And these are the three brains. And then we keep on saying that you need, you still need to have half a brain that is the driver, um, and and we say that half a brain is not because the driver are becoming more stupid, but because they can use the other half of the brain to do other things like working, like you know, um, watching a movie or, or engaging with someone else or whatever it is. But they still have to have and keep an eye on that everything works well, that there's nothing particularly strange happening. And, and that's where we see that when these three and a half brains are on, uh, autonomous driving works uh, fantastically well and um, with a, a very huge reduction in, in crashes and traffic and uh, fuel consumption, so on and so forth. So we, we, we we're pushing for these three and a half brains to be um, active and, and, um, and simultaneously working so that it can, it can offer this uh, great new feature to the word. I think that's great. Um, I kind of feel like I should put a disclaimer on that, that, uh, you know, until you have these fully autonomous vehicles, uh, that we shouldn't be multitasking. But uh, thank you for that explanation. Well, um, it looks like we have time for just one more question before we open it up to the audience. Earlier, Sally showed us numerous potential technologies along the hype cycle that we need to be aware of. Um, what makes IoT worth the investment within transport right now with all these other competing opportunities that we've discussed? Uh, so th that's, that's, a, that's a good question, Jim. So if, to start with, I think it shouldn't be one or the other. If you look at this curve, there's so many interesting uh, new waves that are there happening that we should uh, we should we should try to explore as much as we can all of them of course we can't do all but uh, i don't think you should choose between you know blockchain or internet of things you should have both in particular if you are a large company or a, a, a world leader like 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 dhl or some of your customers or or us also i think we have a responsibility to bring all of them forward um, you spoke about investing, so we decided in Vodafone that we want to expand beyond what is the pure connectivity, and, and we started to acquire companies and develop our own products, going from the hardware to the platform, the services, and so on. So we did that quite successfully so far. It is, diffi it is a very difficult sector to invest in. Uh, prices are high, expectations are high, there is um, interest from many uh, many companies uh, because if you think of a uh, telecom operator want to invest into the same sector of logistic partners, logistic companies or system integrators or IT companies, we all are trying to look at the same basket. 
but the potential is so big uh, that um, I think I still believe that it's worth it to, to look at it and to invest. Um, it's still not very easy to find companies that are able to, to um, offer services globally. globally. So for, for, for companies like, like, like Vodafone that we are, as I said before, um, um, the most global telecom operator out there, it is difficult to find companies that can support our customers all across the globe. But um, it is something we, we, we do. We buy companies that are probably not yet global, and then we help them to become global thanks to our footprint. But um, I, I would recommend to anyone on, on the webinar to, to keep an eye on, on IoT because it is something that is that is radically changing uh, many industries. And and if, uh, if if I can tell you, if you are not doing it, probably your competitor is doing it because we have so many projects and so many companies every month coming to us to start with new pilots, new ideas, and new ways of doing business. Uh, that is uh, probably affecting all of the verticals that uh, that can be touched by IoT. Well, you certainly make a strong case. Um, thank you so much for being with us today, Ludo. You've given us a lot to think about. Um, I believe we have one final poll question, Lori. That we do. Um, I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen for everybody to weigh in on. Um, this last one here is, uh, please select the statement that best describes you. Uh, first one being, my company plans to invest in technology uh, to help us optimize our transportation needs. The systems that we have today are sufficient. And finally, we are waiting to see which technologies prevail. Looks like our majority here, 63% planning to invest in technology to optimize transportation needs. 9% um, feeling that the systems uh, they have today are sufficient and 28% waiting to see which technologies prevail. Uh, Jim, thoughts on, on uh, these responses? I guess I'm not too surprised. 63% planning to invest it makes sense. I think the 28%, it probably depends on which technologies we're speaking of, specifically the IoT that uh, Luda was talking about versus some of the other technology trends. Um, you know, we're certainly waiting, uh, but uh, keeping a close eye on, on certain things at DHL to see when they're really going to take off and exactly how they will uh, affect things. So not really a surprise. Thanks, everyone. All right. Uh, maybe a quick wrap up. Yeah, I guess to sum things up, when we started this session, we talked about the case for transport transformation based on the recurring challenges we face, most of which fall into one of these categories on the slide. The good news is the technology is finally advanced enough that every one of these can now be addressed in some way. Instead of outdated communication methods, um, information uh, can be automatically collected now and accessed anytime from anywhere with the proper technology. Instead of limited visibility, we can have much more complete visibility across every aspect of transport operations and the supply chain as a whole. Rather than having to settle for ballpark cost forecasts, uh, we We'll be able to drill down using point-to-point -point details for a true understanding of our spend, and we can make better, faster use of that historical information that we have for more accurate forecasting of, of what's to come in future years. Those slow processes we talked about will be sped up by the automation of manual work, and decision-making will continue to become faster and easier with the use of predictive analytics. Finally, the current lack of efficiency will give way to continuous optimization um, using the real-time data that we now ha can have access to. Uh, for these reasons and more, I think it's understandable that we now find ourselves reimagining the future of transport. Thanks to the recent emergence and availability of new technologies over just the last few years, the progress many of us had hoped to eventually see is actually outpaced by reality. Uh, let's go back to you, Lori, for some questions. All right, will do. And um, just before we do that, I uh, wanted to share some next steps with everyone. Um, if you would look for a follow-up email to be distributed in the next week, uh, including access to a specially curated collection of additional supply chain transport resources, 
as well as information on how to set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a supply chain transportation expert. And later this summer, findings from the latest DHL supply chain research into future transport trends uh, will be published. So at this point, I would like to ask uh, Jim, Sally, and Ludo uh, back to the virtual podium, if you will. And we're going to start uh, with a question to you, Ludo. Um, and the question is, what kind of advice would you give a company considering an IoT implementation across their transport operations? Well, uh, I could go on forever, but uh, let's say that uh, if I had to pick three key things that needs really to be looked at carefully is uh, one, I think, to make sure um, you select the, the, the right partners for what you need. So if it is um, multi-country, you select the partner that can, can help you in every country you're looking at. If it is for a specific technology, you look at the you, you really select the partner carefully. That's the first thing. The second thing um, I would say is that you outline clearly what would good look like. So what is the outcome you're expecting from it? If it's cost reduction, if it's efficiency, if it's a better process, better service for your customers, but having very clear at the beginning what is the aim of this um, IoT project. Last but not least and we've seen a lot of projects fail because of that, you have to be ready internally as a company. So, you know, taking decisions on data or radically change the way you interact with your customers due to this, the outcome of an IoT sensor and so on is not really easy um, to, to, to accept internally because uh, it, it goes to touch those uh, operation um, very well um, consolidated ways of working that needs to change and and of course it is difficult to take the decision so often we see that you need a strong um, CEO or you know very high up in the in the in the organization support to to, to force that to become the, the way forward because if not you're going to face issues around and you know, maybe you know I said operations or, or finance or billing or you know approval for for logistic or whatever it is so so all of that needs to be you need to be prepared the company needs to be prepared to 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 make the step that's would be my three things okay well thank you ludo uh next question here for you jim uh, how do you view transport being impacted over the next years with the shift from traditional supply chains uh, dcs to outlet stores uh, towards more direct to customer shipments Yes, I think we're already seeing a lot of this um, with uh, the impact of e-commerce and uh, we're seeing product being stocked closer and closer to the customers in large cities. We're seeing crowdsourcing and uh, smaller and smaller vehicles in some cities, bicycles uh, to transport locally. The beauty of the technology, to bring it back to the technology availability, we can now interconnect not just uh, cell phones and, and large trucks, but uh, cars and uh, other vehicles. And uh, that enables us to provide a very tight and uh, certain supply chain uh, all the way to the end customer, to the final mile delivery to that individual consumer. All right. Uh, next question here for Sally. Um, all these technologies, uh, big data, blockchain, IoT, AI, etc., seem to be very current in the logistics sector and benefits are pretty clear. But looking into developing countries such as the ones in South America, they still seem to be very far away. They still seem to be very far away technologies, far from being understood and used. So here's the question. Uh, how realistic do you believe it will become and how long will it take the new norm for these countries? Um, I, I would say that in South America, they are adopting uh, the more um, mature technologies that have been proven out and are actually innovating as well. So I'm not sure I completely agree that they're very far away technologies. Um, you know, at DHL, we're a global company, and most of our products are able to be deployed anywhere in the world. Um, but I, I will say uh, 
specifically to your question, how long will it take to be the new norm? Uh, I would say uh, South America is in the larger companies uh, right there with the rest of the world. Okay. Uh, next question over to you, Jim. Uh, technology has a cost to implement and maintain uh, for a low price point, low margin product. How do you see these new technologies being applicable? Yeah, the, I mean, the costs continue to come down, but the, the, the opportunity is still there for third parties to share a lot of the costs across uh, multiple customers and provide, uh, be a testing point, I guess, for some of these capabilities that we then share uh, with our customers, oftentimes our most progressive clients that we're working with, uh, which, which uh, still enables us to, uh, when you combine that with the uh, physical delivery of the product, with the uh, ability to uh, show visibility across our warehouses and our, our transportation providers, um, still add a lot of value that an individual point technology solution uh, can't on its own, and, and these technologies still require a lot of effort on the part of the uh, the individual supplier, shipper, manufacturer. Um, so uh, we see, see, certainly see these as opportunities to reduce cost, which is great for all of us, uh, but there's a lot of complexity that still comes into managing an entire supply chain from uh, raw materials to end uh, consumer customer. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving over uh, to Ludo, and the question here is, how will regulations impact the implementation of IoT in supply chains? Yeah, so I would, uh, I would redefine the question in how regulation is impacting. <laughs> so, um, so we have um, different type of regulation uh, that are, of course, impacting um, the IoT space, but I would say all of the data linked companies or businesses uh, and and it's we should look at it at um, different so there's this different aspect of it the first one is a transfer of data abroad if you think of China or Brazil India and other um, countries there is always a little bit Russia is difficult to difficult it's not allowed to, to take data out of the country so that is, of course, affecting uh, businesses that want to manage centrally um, some 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 IoT solutions. That's the first one. Second thing is, of course, that if you apply uh, IoT into the healthcare space, you get into all of the um, healthcare regulation uh, aspects. Or if you do it, autonomous driving um, is, of course, affecting all of the transportation and and you know road uh, road associations and and in every country is different so the regulation is 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 very important so maybe i i should have mentioned that also before once you've planned what you want to do and you have the right budget and the right support from senior management it is key that well that comes along with selecting your partner so if you select a partner that is in this industry that is working um in in many region many countries we know what what blocked us? What stopped uh, projects in, in 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 several regions or countries, and and why? So we now have, I think, a, a quite a good expertise ourselves. But many other companies, I, not, I'm not trying to sell anything. But uh, there's many companies out there that they know what they're doing, and there are ways forward. Uh, but it's uh, it's always very tricky, and it's a it's 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 a key blocking point sometimes, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we expect slowly things to get better. The more people get used to it, uh, the more the regulator also get used to it. The more we have alignment on ways of uh, of operating, um, the easiest it would be. You know, you, we, it's, it's so new that also for the regulator, it's, it's strange. You know, sometimes they take decisions that are a little bit harsh or for like say, pr um, stopping p potential new business, but. Um, um, I think the more we move forward, the more things would get uh, more ordinary and, uh, and 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 clear. Okay, thank you. Um, next up for you, Sally. Uh, 
question here is, what impact do you expect 3D printing to have on your business and against which timelines? I think as 3D printing, you know, and additive manufacturing is the technology matures, it will allow us to provide a better service to our customers by forward deploying, you know, the ability to create service parts or parts needed in manufacturing or footwear, apparel, um, being able to be deployed closer to the customer, the end customer uh, will be able to provide a better service. And I see this uh, in er early days and uh, within the next two to three years, more applications and better maturity for the technology. So very exciting, and I, I see it all as positive. Okay. Uh, question here for you, Jim. Um, of the eight trends expected to have the biggest influence on future transport logistics, which ones are currently affecting transport the most? And do you think the answer will be different in five years? Okay, well, um, the first thing that comes to mind, I think somebody already asked a question on it, was really the e-commerce trends. Those are um, have certainly changed nearly everything over the last few years. Of course, there's still a lot of bricks and mortar um, and uh, shopping done in, in, in malls, but uh, that's certainly changing things dramatically. I would say uh, the other things that we're seeing uh, changing right now. Uh, Sally mentioned digital freight platforms, digital freight marketplaces for matching freight and capacity. I think you'll see that over the next five years uh, start to take a bigger hold. And then uh, the real-time tracking, uh, the digitalization of the trucks, the onboard computers that are now mandated on the uh, Class 8 vehicles in the U.S. and are certainly available in other parts of the world are, are really changing dramatically. The type of information that we're able to get. And we'll build on that with things like artificial intelligence and big data and predictive analytics. Um, different in the next five years, I would say, I, you know, I really think that the autonomous vehicles, the electric vehicles are going to be uh, catching on uh, because we need them. We, need, we, we have a shortage of drivers. It just makes sense. Uh, uh, I think most of what it depends on now, certainly for long haul trucking, uh, is uh, public acceptance, which will happen. Um, and then uh, certainly the other trends can't be minimized, things like sustainable logistics and urbanization, uh, but those uh, seem to be kind of ongoing and will continue certainly on into the future and become more and more important. Okay, thank you. and. Uh... One more question here for you, Sally. Uh, should TMS be reimagined to face future to face future of transport? If so, which direction TMS should take primarily from the mid or the long term future? And if you need me to read that so again, I certainly can. Or if you want to restate uh, that. Uh, so TMS being transportation management system. I think we're seeing initial trends in the market for transport systems to become more collaborative across many partners in the supply chain. So I, I do think they should be uh, re-imaged and would be one of the technologies that can be uh, improved to better support the expectations of the user of the system. So. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. And it uh, looks like we have time for just one more question. I'm going to uh, go over to you, Jim. And the question is, how is DHL preparing customers for the impact of future transport trends? Well, it, it probably um, similar to what others might say here, we have some customers that are very, very progressive. And we love that because we can do uh, testing of pilots uh, with some of those clients, uh, which we've done, and then roll out that capability more broadly to our other customers and uh, use that to um, instill confidence. But innovation is a huge part of what we do at DHL. Digitalization is a strategy absolutely across the company. 
And within our group, we have uh, four or five projects right now uh, where you know the value that we can bring is taking this technology and sharing it across our entire customer base and using that investment for our customer's behalf. So every quarterly review or monthly review with customers, we are talking about the innovation so it stays in front of them. Um, there are certainly customers who are hesitant, but being able to show them the technology um, and the services and capabilities working uh, really uh, uh, helps us to then take the next step with these clients. All right, well, fantastic. And um, I think we're out of time as far as questions are concerned. But uh, before we sign off, I would like to take a moment to thank each of you for joining us and trust that you found today's webinar to be of value. Special thanks to Jim Monkmeyer, Sally Miller, and Ludo Fassetti. Uh, and of course, our sponsor, DHL. And again, thanks for joining us. This is Lori Dearman saying, hope we see you on the next one. Bye for now.